uh, important and the most basic illustrate illustration tools that graphic designer can have. So when Harul Viji and I used to talk about what should the logo be, we ended up designing. I had like multiple pages of just designs with a pen, on a paper and with a pencil, and that's about it. Sometimes a pen also, but uh, that's how we started. We built sketches. And those sketches really ended up being the Nishkam TV logo we see today. And what is photography? You guys have dealt with photography, right? You guys, uh, some of you acted in movies also. Mm -hmm. There were photographs yeah. taken, there were posters built. Um, so photography. And photography in itself is a very, very uh, big field. And I think Robert BG probably can cover it better than me. Um, typography. You guys write. You guys write English, sometimes Punjabi also here. Now typography is is basically taking it to a further advanced level. You guys have worked on computers, there are fonts. Yeah. What are fonts? What fonts are like different yeah, styles. yeah, different styles, right? Different styles of writing the same thing. So that's that's a part of typo typography. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's another uh, there's another word for it um, may or may not rhyme or cross. I think to my understanding it's a little um, uh, overlapping with typography which is calligraphy I'm not uh, very familiar uh, with it though but uh, that is something that also deals with uh, how to write the letters how to create fonts. Calligraphy I believe if I'm not wrong is, is putting it in a very stylized way. Yeah. So just uh, use a special kind of a pen and ink and point it tip and yes. just style it like one of the alphabets at the beginning or the end usually. Yeah, just yeah and it, on, a, on a paper there are, there are specific styles of pens that you end up right. using. There are various really different styles. Actually it intrigued me at some point in time in the past so much I used to try it. But and then I uh, shifted my focus back to just drawing stuff because I think I'm better at that than writing. Okay, um, so those are the three main areas of what graphic designing is, and um, where is it used? Here, we used it in Nishkam TV. We use it everywhere. We started with the logo, right? The logo and the branding, which is the most important part of Nishkam TV, as to how do you identify Nishkam TV? Anybody remember this? Oh yeah. yeah. This was the poster we created that was put outside in Gurdwara. It's a teaser. It's a teaser poster. It basically tells you something's coming. People get excited. Go ahead. Um, did you like display the design of your Nishan TV logo like the first one you actually drew? Was it the first one? You Show you? Yeah, I was drawing. Unfortunately, it was done on, uh, I think, uh, tissue paper if I'm not wrong. Or you say that. But that's how the design really start. Actually, Harbal BG and I were sitting in that media lab which was still being built. And uh, I, I showed him a few designs and he said, they don't really look like Nishkam TV. And uh, then we sat and we talked about it. It was like, it has to be like a vision. Or what is vision? Vision comes from eyes. Go ahead. Is it kind of like a hook? A hook? Like, oh, he's talking about the rocket, that's rocket printer. Oh, this is a rocket. This is, so essentially, all of this is, it is actually a single, single image here. I just put it on the presentation to show you what all we've done. There is text with a specific font. This particular thing is actually uh, something we picked up from the internet. You can find a lot of graphics stuff on the internet. Uh, the only interesting part to that is sometimes they are paid sometimes they are free so you have to be really careful there right? so but yeah Adam, is that the question you were asking about the logo or did you have no idea so he wants to was that the first illustration that you made that got a group no it was, oh no i'll show you more 40 50 i don't know how many you must have we, made other we did a lot of that uh, even uh, so i'll show you an interesting thing you guys remember the media wall that we had uh, in oh, the yeah. In, in, in that, um, the rotors were down there yeah. and there were photographs placed yeah. and camera was there at the launch. We built that media wall also. That media wall actually has three logos. <coughs> on it. One is uh, Pirneel, the other is uh, Nishkam TV, and there is Khalsa School logo. I'll show you. The Khalsa School logo actually ended up being the most complex one. Okay. 
this uh, is not the first design Uncle made. He made tons of them before they actually decided upon this. This was the final one. We can get into those details eventually if you guys are interested. Okay, what else? Um, so product packaging. Product packaging is mostly like you see when you when you go and buy uh, candies, they are, they are, the wrappers are pretty colorful, right? They are like made so nice. Why? Why don't they just give you in white and black? Okay. So it looks more interesting and appealing. Okay, how about you? They want the money, for sure. They want to make it attractive. Yes. Sometimes they'll have words saying like, a good candy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? Whatever. So that, that's all That's all imagination. That's all understanding who you are selling it to or who, who is the consumer. Is how, how people have it. Do you know the best candies, they have different, you know, animal heads or cartoon heads on top of the best candies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's all part of it. So that's all product packaging. That is graphic designing. The next time you pick up a candy, you know what? Uh, how, how that thing got there? How that wrapper got there? So okay. What else? Remember this? The the banner? Yeah. The blue color banner? Yeah. Right? You guys saw this yeah. on the launch? This was built on graphic designing. So there are actually three logos on it. One is Nishkam TV logo, the other two actually are uh, uh, the sponsors that we have. Who are they? So there is a um, thing, Saffron Grill and uh, the image is a little smaller than I can tell you. No. So what we have here is, uh, so basically uh, this, was, this was a design that actually came through teamwork. Um, a lot of people had inputs, uh, Manfi Fanji here. And a lot of other people who gave their inputs. It took us a while to get the panel going. This is particularly. Well, it's thing. supposed to mean something. It's supposed to tell what Nishkam TV does. Yeah. The idea is we wanted this to be given to people so they would go back to their places, their homes, their states, their countries, and put it up there for us. So they other people can see it and know what Nishkam TV is. Sort of an advertising kind of Web design. You you guys seen the newsletter that uh, yeah. Nishkam TV is yeah. on? So this logo is actually a graphic design thing. That entire newsletter is a graphic design thing because it involves layouts. And I'll tell you what how layouts are also done. There are different softwares. But the best way to do it is draw it out. Draw it out with a pencil and paper. Maybe color it also if need. Right, and then eventually get to the computer. So it's all about drawing, and I'm sure everybody likes drawing. Yeah. Okay, so other the other pieces also. This was the banner that we unveiled for Nishkam TV. Then we have this particular Nishkam TV sticker at top of the media lab. If you guys saw that, yeah. Um, yeah. and this particular thing, the visiting card. You guys have been thinking there were stickers. They're not. They're actually they're actually card papers. We got them printed. Thanks to Lati Pandi and Manfi Pandi, they did a lot of work on that. Uh, so the image was something that was clicked at the launch of Nishkam TV. The logo we already had, and we had a part of the mission statement of uh, Nishkam TV put into uh, actually a concise thing, put onto the card, and that's how all of this got in place. Right? What else? Okay, tools. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna ask that. Slide. I was just gonna ask if you, um, if you, what software you use. We'll get to that. That was actually the next slide. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we are dealing with advanced people here. Okay. So, what tools did I use? When I really used a pencil, sometimes a pen, to begin with, and. Uh, that's how everything started. I mean, uh, it's interesting to remember that uh, uh, Arthur Biji and I were actually uh, sitting in that media lab and we didn't even have a paper in our hand, probably a pen lying around. 
we were like uh, and he was he, he was talking to me about nishkam tv what nishkam tv is what he thought what nishkam tv is and uh, as as a uh, it was my responsibility to see if i can create a graphic out of it right it was a test for me really i think it was a test for me and uh, luckily i passed it um so essentially um he, he was talking to me and uh, in the meantime i was sitting on this piece of really torn half torn paper trying to draw something make sense out of it i took back took it back took that torn sh sheet of paper with me back and uh, sat in front of the computer and i was like let's refine it a bit and we'll get to the software part i'll show you the software part. so that is how the that is why pen and pencil is very important and trust me people think it's the most boring part of graphic designing but it is the most fundamental part of uh, graphic design it's really what uh, what makes the difference in uh, in your business you go on the go online and try to search for tools for graphic design i mean most of softwares will show up but if you start reading blogs and stuff they talk about pencil and paper only that's how it is okay now getting to the actually interesting piece that everybody wants to know what graphic softwares well there are various different graphic softwares and uh, there is a concept of something called as the workflow not sure if you not sure if you get here have heard about it a workflow is something like it's a process like uh, when you guys do acting or when you guys try to build a video there are a lot of activities involved they have to be done in a certain sequence and then there are conditions as to what happens now what happens then Let's let's put it as a let's say that is a workflow, right? And similar thing happens with graphic designing also. There is a Adobe Photoshop. I'm sure most of you have heard of it. And there is a, Adobe makes a lot of softwares. So go ahead. Um, in school, when we build something, it's like um, or if you need click this to unlock Adobe Flash Player. Flash players are different. So flash players are. Um, Well, they are actually going to be extinct very soon. But Flash Player is one of the tools that Adobe made uh, for the internet, where you could, for example, see videos or some interactive user interface for the web design or the website. That is where Flash Player is basically coming to play. Um, what we are um, eventually, what you build here in Photoshop, Illustrator, and in Design, eventually can be can go into a a, a Flash Player based system. needs to be converted uh, we can get into the technicalities later but anyways the graphic software so photoshop um and there is something called as affinity photo so um the reason um adobe photoshop is the most industry wide software to be seen what do you do with that you actually edit photos if anybody click photos on the camera yeah ever yeah. Any, anybody have uh, i mean i'm sure you guys are very smart people you have smartphones and you know how to deal with them you can edit pictures you can change colors you can change the light on it you can probably you know make mustaches for people who don't have one on that on that photo that's called photo editing you're doing it with a finger they just have software that can do much more advanced things than what you're doing on the phone so that's a dope photoshop and affinity photo um Adobe Illustrator and these are my favorite tools by the way uh, the illustrator and the design tool that's what i deal with and that is where the word vector comes into play i'll explain that um so adobe illustrator and affinity designer essentially with a pencil the thing that you draw you can also do it on a computer on these particular softwares and guess what you can increase the size can anybody anybody try to increase the size of a photo on a phone and see all those squares forming yeah. deforming the picture yeah. so it's basically it's happening pictures. because those pictures are called raster pictures the raster designs actually don't go beyond a certain magnification interestingly vectors you can magnify as much as you make it as big as you want and nothing changes in them they look exactly the same very clear very nice I'll show you some. Adobe InDesign, Quark Express, Affinity Publisher. Anybody saw magazines or newspapers ever? I'm sure you have. They are built in uh, Adobe InDesign, Quark Express, Affinity Publisher. I used to work for Quark a while back. 
So um, that's uh, that's something uh, that that also the newsletter that we made for uh, Nishkam TV. Uh, that's one of the artifacts that a typical uh, InDesign, Quark Express, or a publisher tool can actually can actually offer. You can actually build the design in it and send it to press. That's how, uh, if, you, if you ever get a chance to go to a newspaper office and see their printing press, they actually have a design system where all the layouting of that page happens before it actually goes to the printing press. So there's a lot of work involved there. So a few softwares here. Did you one question? Yeah. So are these Adobe and uh, Affinity, are they related by any chance? They're competitors. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about these softwares, Adobe has recently moved their software to subscription based. You guys I'm sure know about Netflix, yes. you may pay a few dollars to them every month to see a lot of nice movies and episodes. Um, so software has also come that way. To use that software you pay them every month, so that's Adobe does that. Affinity on the other hand actually sells it to you one time and then you can use it for as long as you like. They don't ask for payment anymore, and that's why I like it. <laughs> Otherwise, do you recommend any free software? Yeah, I, I uh, uh, actually I forgot to put in there, but uh, there are there are funny names. There, it's called the GIMP, G I M P. Uh, then we have Inkscape. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a pretty nice tool. So those those are two interesting tools, and uh, I mean they. Um, Every every type of graphic tool has a um, it's an open source uh, option. Um, the reason I still stick with um, a paid option is because of the refined user interface they provide. I have used Jim and I have used Inkscape also. It was a long time back, but uh, they ended up a little clunky. But I'm sure they have improved a lot. So it's worth giving a try. And uh, if uh, you like it, well. Get it for free. You can have as much fun as you want with it. So, okay. So, what is just a clarification point? Yeah. Uh, so this company, Adobe, or Adobe, people use that name interchangeably. Some people call it Adobe. Some yeah. call it Adobe. So don't get confused because the kids are learning okay. this company, this name for the first time. So if you hear somebody saying Adobe or Adobe, it's a one the same thing. Right. Okay. So what have we been doing? This. No. So this is Affinity Designer. Right. Um, I think Da Vinci is also one of the software. I don't remember what that is. For editing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for videos. It's not for videos, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a vector design tool. Um, in, in graphics, what are vectors? So there are, there are two terms in graphics you need to know. Uh, and this is the price to graphics only. Vectors in physics is a little different. So don't confuse that. But uh, ra raster and vectors, these are the two terms they use in graphics a lot. And they are supposed to be the most fundamental thing you guys need to understand before you get into graphics. Why? Because raster mostly deals with images. Like the image you see here on, uh, on, the, on the left hand side. So if I try and expand this, you see these dots being formed? Yeah. That's a raster image. It cannot be, it cannot be magnified beyond a certain uh, extent. Otherwise, this is what happens. Essentially, it's the image is broken. Yeah. What about Minecraft? Like you can see like the raster in it. Minecraft is a little different, yeah. but you, I, I can make vectors in Minecraft also. So we can leave it that. Okay. And what what is a vector? So this this Nishkam TV logo. No matter how small I make this, it stays the way it is. No matter how big I make it, though my screen is a little smaller for it, but if you see closely. Nothing changes, it's still very sharp and clear. No dots, no squares, no dots, nothing, right? It's very clear to you. And no matter how much expand you uh, how much you expand it. So the reason you still see a little bit of distortion here, uh, 
um, actually you can see it on the TV more, not on the screen, because of the resolution. The TV has a lower resolution. So these uh, oh, yeah. saw-like things you see, they're actually because of the screen, not the actual image. The actual image can be expanded as much as you want, but it's the screen that has a certain limitation. So it's, it, it gets a little tricky there because you're dealing with vectors on the raster screen, right? So, this is how we did it. But essentially, what, what are we doing here? We're actually building lines, circles, and using colors. Yeah? The one with the sharper colors, would that also have like a bigger um, file? Interestingly, no. So, a typical um, bitmap used to be one of a very popular uh, styles of imaging at one point and there are many other images if you've seen files like .jpg, .jpeg, .png um, uh, so all these files are actually raster files with a little bit of a difference right and essentially what they hold is every pixel information right that is why when you try to uh, magnify it beyond their limits you see, you see squares on the screen However, in case of a vector, a vector is typically a formula. Um, now there are various different ages of kids here and obviously we have adults here. If you, eventually you guys are going to deal with quadratic equations. Uh, I won't go into details of what they are. But typically the idea is it's a formula, right? How is a formula derived? You see a complex problem, you break it down to different examples. Okay, for example, I, I tell you there are nine balls and uh, um, those nine balls, uh, one of them is a heavier ball, right? And you have to find out the heavier ball by putting it on all these balls onto a weighing scale, but you can only do it two times. I know how to do it. I know you do. You probably so have read it. I put them in groups of three and then you weigh them and then you put them in the if they're equal, then you take the other one and weigh two, and then the closer you put it in This is a typical computer programming algorithm question you will ask when you go for a job. I've been asked one. So, um, graphic designing, how are, how are these two things related? It all boils down to uh, mathematics also. Okay, and if you want to go into more details of these things, maths is actually a very good area to start looking at. Quadratic equations is one of the simplest forms of uh, uh, <laughs> equations you may deal with. And essentially, these graphic files, as you asked, are way smaller than a typical image file. Yeah, an image file could be a, a, a two megabytes file. However, a graphics file might just end up being a 200 kilobyte file. Big, big difference dealing with what um, one by eighth of the size that's huge yeah so how did you make a vector image as compared to the raster? Raster. raster um it's mostly software thing um and how you save that file so i can save a file as an image so for example uh, we are looking at affinity designer it's a vector design tool if i say export Export basically means I can move it to any image. So here I can specify what I want. I can do a PNG, I can do a JPEG, I can see what uh, size I want, I can actually, uh, it says best quality, I can bring it down to low, right? And I can, I can decrease the size here. I can change various attributes of it, decide what I want to print. Well, actually, before I get there, this particular document actually contains a lot more than you thought. These are all the visiting cards we ended up building in the beginning. So these were all the trials I had to do. What you see this, uh, this one, is actually the template that I ended up building. Essentially, all you have to do is copy it, change the words, change the details for the particular person in it, and actually make cards here, here, everywhere. That's all, you just copy it and keep making. I already designed the template. So already, we, we already, as a team, we figured out this is what we wanted. And now whoever wants a visiting card, all they have to do is go in here, copy this, move it to a separate location, say for example, like that. 
that. Now I have to do it. Go here. Essentially, that's all you have to do. Now, what do you, how, how do you, how do you send it for printing? You go here, you say export. Um, so what I'm doing here on the right hand side is basically layers. So I'm on the same layer. That layer has a group. The group has a lot of images. See, this is the Nishkam TV logo. It's this thing right here. And all these are its components. It's not just a single image. So if I break it down. So this is a group. Break it down, say I'm going to fall. See, I can actually pull everything apart. This entire thing is one thing. I just pulled the whole thing apart. This is what graphic designing is. And this is where, where the creativity comes. Now, how do you get to this? So, first you have to draw this. Because a human mind typically wants to figure out the whole picture first. I show you a picture of a house, you'll have a different feeling about it. If I show you just a bulb, you may think like, where are we going with this, right? If I show you a house, you know where the bulbs go. You know where the fan goes, you know where the taps go, you know where everything else goes, right? And that's why you have to draw it first. So you, you can do a drawing and then you go to each tiny thing, right? So let's put things back. <coughs> Some TV local looks good like this. How did you, oh, like, get the, the, how did you, did you, like, I actually had to make it. I tried to pick up a lot of Kanda options from the internet. Um, eventually, I had to build one of my own because sometimes they were distorted, sometimes they were a little off. It's, it's just how much detail you can look at. So how did you make it? Make it? Yeah. yeah, remember remember the pencil? So, how do you make a kanda? So, I hope that uh, after this, but how do you make a kanda? This, 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 that might be a little out. Ah, can't see Yeah, you can see. I have a question, uh, going yeah. back to the rafters and the vectors, yeah. Uh, when do you use one over the other? Like, how does when someone's making an image, how do they decide whether they should make a vector or a raster? Sure. Give me a second. So for this, um, how do you get it to it would be even on one side? Is there like a yeah? You can, you so, can flip yeah. through there, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a great question actually. Um, essentially, people on the uh, people on the meeting, I was trying to draw the kanda on the board. And the question is, uh, I'll get to you. There's a kanda on the board, um, and the question was, a kanda is really a symmetric drawing. If you build the half, why do you have to build the other half? And that is where these softwares are very cool. I actually designed the kanda in Adobe Illustrator. Eventually, I moved it to Affinity Design. Um, so, uh, in, in Adobe Illustrator, and I'm sure Affinity also has it, there is a concept of mirroring. A mirror? Yeah. Stand in front of a mirror like this, you see the other half here, and that's exactly what these softwares can have you do. Essentially, you build one half, put a line in between, and tell that line is a mirror, it will actually mirror the whole thing on the other side. When you keep change, make changes here, it changes the other side also. Softwares are pretty cool. Fun to work with. Yeah. Um, um, so, you said that you have to draw the whole thing on the board, and then you Uh, yes, so that was the question uh, Tani also had, right? Why do we use vector and why do we use raster? Uh, she was asking how you know which one to use. How you know which one to use. If you're looking at an image, a photo click on a pic on a camera, any kind of camera, it is a raster design. And typically, 
to edit a raster design, you would use a software like Affinity Photo or uh, Affinity Designer, uh, sorry, uh, Adobe Photoshop, and those uh, can help you edit that picture. Now, how do you decide? It is a picture, it has to be raster. You can't vectorize the picture. You can, but it's, it's going to be way more complicated than just having a very high resolution image. When, when we are creating anything from scratch, um, I preferred using um, Illustrator and Designer over, uh, over Photoshop because Illustrator and Designer provide me the tools to build a, a, a drawing much more effectively than, um, than a Photoshop. So uh, typically, uh, what would you what would you do with a Photoshop? You can pick a Photoshop picture, and if it has a rose in it and a person in it, you can make the person a black and white person, and the rose still stays red. That is what a Photoshop can do. A raster image, um, a vector image, a vector image. Uh, essentially, like for example, the button that you are holding, that Nishkan PP button. Um, it, uh, we built it as a vector image because we did not know the size of the button we wanted to put it on. If I had built a smaller, smaller uh, raster-based uh, drawing for for the button, and we eventually chose a, a bigger button, I would have seen actually those boxes, those distortions on the button itself. That's one way of deciding what you want to go with. Yeah. So why don't you just always use a vector? Uh, why don't we always use a vector? You can't draw a photograph. I mean, you can, it's, it's more work. So okay. typically, uh, for example, this is actually a very good example uh, for, uh, for how a vector and uh, um, you know, a, a raster can be combined. The background image on the left hand side the image, uh, left hand side template actually is a raster image. Now all I have to do is, I know this has to go on a visiting card. I know the size of the visiting card typically, right? All I have to make sure is the image uh, does not uh, distort when I put it on that particular size. And if I can do that, I can actually put vector things on top of it. So. Another example of uh, vectors is that um, these are all the logos, by the way, we have for Nishkam TV. Right? I couldn't have done different white, orange, and this interesting looking color here, a mix um, on, on the raster. But so is it safe to say that all the pictures, photographs, are better done as rasterized. They are rasterized. They are rasterized. They are rasterized. And the logo that you create from scratch for oversimplification is vector. Yeah. So it's um it's a matter of what are you trying to do. Typically, if you have a mix of vector and uh, raster, it, it's preferred to be on a tool like Illustrator, right? Because that can actually change your vector the way you like. And still have your raster in place. Uh, so it was that the one that you use a layer so that you can keep them separate? So layering is a different concept. Okay. Um, layers is like um, I can have an image, put a layer on top of it. Say this, um, if I go back to the business card, so This background image you see here on the on the right hand side, it's actually a layer of created. Now, you know the fun part it can go away. That's what layers are. So, um, you want to uh, ask the question differently? I think you still are not. Your question is still not answered. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm trying to uh, understand is. So this has been done in the form of layers to compile both raster components and vector components? In this case, in this yes. Case. And is it done always like that is layered or is it not 
it's 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 not always okay. necessary to do it that way. It depends what you are trying to do. Okay. So sometimes the software tool itself is expects you. In this case, the software tool actually expected me to have a layer, a background okay. layer, a background image layer. So it depends on the software you are using. Yes, and most of them actually work on the same concept. Okay. Because it's eventually boils down to mathematics. So they generally end up having the same concept. So uh, Adobe Photoshop, uh, sorry, Adobe Illustrator would have a very similar way of doing it. Maybe a little more user friendly, where you don't have to specifically say I'm adding a layer. It would do it yourself. It would do it by itself. Mm -hmm. But you would still end up having a layer. So. Uh, I know it's a, it's actually a very complex question to answer, but uh, uh, I, how I generally understand of rasters and vectors and how I differentiate between them, if I'm trying to make something of my own, I can do it in a vector and especially do it in a vector because I don't know the end size of the product. You can actually build an entire image <coughs> in uh, Photoshop also. By the way, this Nishkan TV logo I could have built in Photoshop, but then I would have respected the size of it. Could have been of a particular size only. I couldn't have expanded it to uh, this large level. Also, a large, larger the image, the larger the file size. And trust me, graphics industry uh, storage is a big problem as far as software files are concerned. Okay. A few more, few more images. Um, I know uh, we actually are doing. I said it was a half an hour uh, session. It didn't end up being that. Uh, you guys saw this uh, uh, short film, yes. right? No. 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 Okay. You should see it actually. No. Um, you saw the film that Nishant uh, Lee is produced. The film made. So I had a choice of doing this in either raster or uh, vector. Um, I chose I chose vector because of my personal thing. Not that I could not have done it on a on a uh, affinity photo or a group photo because because all it has really are images. And they are not really expandable, right? The only thing expandable in this thing is the words here down here. They are actually vectors. I could have done this entire the entire poster and posters are generally done by the way in Photoshop like tools um, and that is that is one place uh, uh, you can build uh, yeah it's primarily a raster based tool illustrator or uh, affinity designer is a vector based tool so yeah do you like copy paste the images onto that like picture Yes. So essentially, uh, there is a tool here um, called Place. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, if I have an image frame, so, mm, yes. so here, and I can increase the size. So this is a this is a PNG file. It's a it's an image file. After a certain time. This image is actually going to go all squares. See this? Pixels. It's called pixelized or distorted. No. So what I imported was a .png or a snapshot of the vector. If it was a real vector, it would not have done this. But because it is a PNG, after a certain resolution, if I try to magnify it, it's going to distort. But because we are dealing with a poster, and I know what the poster size is, the uh, artboard, as you see at the top, the artboard has been designed for a certain size only. All I have to make sure is the images coming on the artboard are big enough to fit in it and don't get distorted when it is printed. That's the fundamental idea we end up using by that bit in there. So, what else? The button, right? The fun part. So this is how the button was designed. Actually, we went to a website. They had this. Uh, they had a um, an Adobe Illustrator uh, template, and I downloaded the template. 
I may change this. So essentially, these lines you see here, they are measurements. This, this particular thing is of a certain size only, and actually you see the size. So you see these images, uh, these, these numbers down here, they are actually the sizes. So this particular image can actually go 1024 by 1024 pixels. But I can still keep it as a vector. Yeah? So like what we did this class is like rascals you will use that when you know the certain size and vectors is when like you don't know the certain size? Yes, that is one way of differentiating between the two. There are many more. For me, mostly it's about preference. Size, yes, sometimes size does matter for me because we didn't know the size of the button. Like we wanted to, so the logo itself, I could have done the logo as a raster, right? But then I have to build the logo every time. I want to put it on a t-shirt. I want to put it on a button. I wanted to build the media wall. By the way, the media wall was a really big project for me. Um, so I think what you're trying to say is that if there's a certain <coughs> sort of a element of design element that has to be used in different contexts, and you don't know what size it's going to be, then it's better to do it as a vector so you can just enlarge it or right. reduce it. And right. it. You know, interestingly, there's one more thing I want to talk to you talk about before I close the topic, is that um, if you ever go to a company, they have these letterheads which already have their logo and something printed. I mean, your dad might show you those. Uh, you have uh, business cards, then you have uh, various types of, if they publish something, there has there is a logo and a certain format coming into play. All these things are actually part of the branding exercise. And graphic designing plays a big, big role in that. You actually have a branding document this talks about what colors you can use for that company. What type of, what logo combinations, can the logo really be white, the way we did it, we had an orange logo, a white logo, and a mixed logo. It's it's part of the company decision, and it's a template we have built. And you cannot make a yellow logo, or you cannot make a purple logo out of it. Because that is not the company image. You wear clothes, right? All of you like a certain type of clothes. It defines you, that's what people see. Right? Tomorrow you started wearing a coat and a pant and coming here people will be like, okay, the branding seems to change. What happened? You know, it's the impression you make. So branding is impressions. You have those branding related stuff um, consists a combination of vectors, rasters and colors. And uh, there are, uh, so the presentation that I did here, um, most of, sometimes uh, on the internet if you go and search, this doesn't really have a template to it, but typically there will be a template where there will be a company logo on the left hand side, there will be uh, something written at the bottom saying you cannot share this with anyone, and all those kind of things. They're all branding related stuff a company does to project an image, and that is all what graphic designing is about. It's about projecting your thoughts, your image, what you think a particular thing might look like. So this is mostly conceptual understanding um, is, is what I wanted to get at in this particular session. If you guys have any questions or if you guys in future are interested to go deeper into these topics, uh, you're more than welcome in reaching out to me or if too many people reach out to me, you might have a session. If you want to design a logo or something. Yeah, I, I really love logo designing yeah, by the way. Yeah. Sorry? What's in the media wall? Media wall? Yeah, we have a... So what are the three logos you were going to show? It's on the media wall. That's actually on the media wall. Where's the media wall? That's the media wall. We'll be talking about it. All these components, they mean something on this button, if you see. See, you just randomly choose the orange color and the blue color. Right, Vishanta, and the blue color of the button is from the t-shirt. Oh yeah. All the t-shirts that uh, Uncle designed the t-shirt, so there has to be sort of a continuity because it's all making the brand. You can't have different colors in the buttons and different colors in the t-shirts and everything has to sort of gel together. Okay.
So this is uh, what the media wall really was. If you remember, it was this huge oh, white yeah. size yeah. thing. Yeah. People were standing in front. Yeah. What did it have on it? This. Again, it's a, the reason why it's a vector image because we had to do it this big. If I would have had to do it like this small, it would have been different. So that is why all of these down here are actually vectors. And they don't break. See this? This is Kalsa School logo. The place where you learn so much things, so many things. This is what that logo is. This is this is how we define it. This is the film Eve logo. So uh, film Eve logo was actually a raster image, or actually a picture that was given to me. And uh, because I had to put it here, I had to actually convert it into a vector. And the interesting part, have you guys ever done tracing? Have you traced anything? Right? These softwares allow you to trace. So that's what I actually did to build the film Eve logo. I didn't want to miss out anything from it. So essentially I put the image, then I started drawing up on top of it. And adding colors to it and making it exactly what the underlying image was. So, where do you put like on a scanner or something? No, or right here. Oh, okay. You basically import the file, the file. Keep, it, keep it at the level where it does not uh, distort, okay, and start, build, uh, start drawing on top of it. Okay. Then you hide the picture in the back. What you actually see is the logo, which is now vector. That's how I did it. Interesting. So it's, it, it's also your, a lot of your imagination to, to get things done. When Harbal Bezi generally comes to me and asks me to do this, um, he generally comes to me, then I go and ask him, do you have a sample? The reason I ask him is so I don't go any different yeah. direction. I have to talk to him and understand what he, what he needs. And then use my imagination to it. Okay. Guruji, one more question. I uh, vector and raster, which is group now, those dot PNG or uh, dot JPEG image, those are example of what? Vector or raster? raster. raster. Yeah. Vectors, uh, vectors are generally uh, dot SVGs, dot EPS, um, or any of these software related, uh, like in this case, this particular software, uh, if you try to save the file, it will say dot AF design. Uh, but it's a software file. If, whatever, if you by the way, a dot PDF can also have vector images. So whenever I give you guys PDFs to print, and they can, they are actually size independent, and they are way smaller than a typical raster based PDF. Uh, when I built the media wall raster image PDF, it ended up being like uh, tens of twenties uh, of M uh, MB size. Eventually what I figured was I can do a PDF on a vector. And that ended up being like 200 KB and I could take it anyway. So less amount of size. Okay, so I know you guys are getting restless. Too much stuff to carry. But uh, thank you so much for joining. And uh, thank you everyone on Skype. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks a lot. This was really good. Thank you, Master. This was really helpful. Yeah, I learned a lot of practice. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 See you guys soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.